Mm-hmm. Yep. So, it's probably kind of hard to tell in this video, but the bushing in the trans is moving, and you can see by the gap between the seal when I move it, see how the gap gets bigger? That is the bushing in the trans is worn out. So my guess would be that idiots that rebuilt this transmission originally uh, did not replace the bushing, uh, which is pretty common. They usually reseal and they don't do the bushings if it's not a really good shop, you know, they avoid it. But I'm trying to see if I can, yeah, see it's got lateral movement in it and it should not. There, you can see it if I do that. So anyways, we're gonna have to change this bushing and maybe the yoke, the slip yoke might be damaged too. Let's just see how good this phone is because it's the only damn thing I can get in here. See the bushing? See the discoloration at the back there? That's because the bushing's whooped. It's worn out. I'm guessing they didn't replace it. I'm not really gonna know for sure till I get this thing all the way apart, but I can see that there's material missing. It does look like it might be wearing a little bit oblong. I might see if I can get a yoke for this thing, but the yoke looks like it's in pretty good shape. So the, yeah, the bushing is worn out. I wasn't gonna make a video on this just cause I was kinda in a hurry to fix it. But uh, I guess since I took some snapshots and, and did a little bit of video, we'll just, we'll roll with it. We'll do a quick YouTube on it. Uh, so this is the original yoke. Uh, I suspect the splines are a little bit worn in it. Um, I did polish the shaft out and I'll insert some photos right here uh, of what the uh, what the what it looked like before I polished it out and of course uh, here's the new one right here um, it's a c5dz I think 4148 uh, alpha I believe is what it is and it does match specifications of the original one it's a little bit hard to figure out what the right one was for it they make a lot of different yokes um, so at any rate um, got a brand new yoke for it this is going to be a very easy thing for us to fix just in case something's out around here um, like I said, I did polish this up, but uh, it came out really nice, but there is some pitting from it sitting over the years. I know that this car sat for a number of years, 20 years, 30 years, something like that uh, before I owned it. Um, that could be what's wearing the bushing, so we just went ahead and we'll just put a new yoke in it. It's just a safe thing to do because I don't want to have to change the bushing again. We go ahead and get the drive shaft painted. Um, I'm going to sand it down and uh, use some uh, uh, rust... Uh, uh, primer on it and then uh, shoot some black on it. We've got the new U-joint coming. The uh, U-joint is a uh, Moog 507. So it took a lot of research to figure out what the right parts were for this because Ford used like three different drive shafts in this car that year. So uh, with the help of John and some research, we were able to kind of figure it all out. So uh, Jeff is sending me the tool to remove the bushing with the trans tail housing in place. I could remove the tail housing uh, and uh, change the bushing that way, but I'm not going to do that um, because there's a special tool for it and it's a little bit less trouble. Jeff has it. He's shipping it down to me since he's so close. It should be quick. It should have it soon. And uh, we'll change that bushing out, put a new seal in it, a new U-joint since it's part. The old one, there really wasn't anything wrong with it other than that it was a million years old, so... I uh, decided I was going to replace it. So, new U-joint, yoke, and seal and bushing. That's all that this thing needs. And hopefully the clunk that was in the trans, and in the earlier clip you saw me move it laterally, which the yoke should never move laterally inside of there. Uh, hopefully that's all going to be nice and tight now. So now one of the things that we're curious about here is, is the bushing worn, which it kind of looks like it is, or was the yoke worn... And if I put the yoke in, you know, if the splines aren't worn, is it going to fit better and not move around laterally like you saw in the beginning? So let's go underneath and check it. So here's what we got. There is still play. It, it is tighter, though. It's tighter for sure. But um, there's still play there. There just shouldn't be. I'd say there's probably 10,000. So the bushing does need to be replaced. 
Well, I guess this is turning into a full-fledged video. So, friend was uh, kind enough to lend me this. Look at this. I mean, these are like original Snap-on USA-made uh, tools for doing the bushings on the uh, C4. And you can't just go out and buy this anymore. So, very, very fortunate there. Um, we got the new bushings here. I got two of them just in case I screw one of them up. And we'll check the fit of the new one on the yoke, and then we'll check the old one after we get it out. But this is the bushing. So, and it does have a direction. There's a notch that you have to line this up with in the tail housing. So, we got that. This here is the installer tool, I believe. This is for the uh, seal. And potentially, I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to look at this one a little bit more. But potentially, this installs the bushing as well. I'm not, I'm not positive yet, but I'm a little less concerned about installing it and more concerned about uh, getting it out without taking it apart. So anyways, that's, uh, that's that. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? So there is no way where this is located. I could have showed you uh, when I pulled it out, um, but now I can show you the race is pulled out. This tool is worth its weight in gold. Um, so glad that I have a friend that had one. Uh, so the way this works right here, I showed you before, this this slides to keep the fingers from collapsing when you go to pull the bushing out. You know, so you slide it in, and then you slide this, once it snaps in, once this snaps on the other side of the bushing, you know, on this side of the bushing, then you can slide this in to keep these fingers from collapsing when you go to pull it out. So that's what locks it in. So you just slide that back, and then I probably can't get this off here without using two hands, but these fingers bend very easily obviously so you just squeeze these in and pop this bushing off and that's it it comes off so let me pop it off here let's see how loose it is on the yoke on the old yoke and the new yoke versus a new bushing yeah this bushing is substantially worn let me see if we can get it in the light look at that look at how worn i don't think that they replaced it when they rebuilt the trans you know you can see that's the side that it was riding on because, you know, there's a thrust side. And uh, obviously, that's where it was riding. That's where it wore it out. Now, I think that this was on the bottom notch. So that must be the thrust side. So anyways, yeah, this sucker is shot. Let's uh, see. Does it fit on the new yoke? The shop is just a disaster zone. Oh, yeah, look at that. Way too loose. That shouldn't just slide right on there. That should be... That should be tight. That shouldn't, I shouldn't, it, it should slide on, but pretty hard if, if it even slides on and then it shouldn't have any play in it. Look at the, look at the play. So that's the old one. Let's grab a new one. Here's a brand new one, but it doesn't even go on there. Yeah, that's more along what the lines of what I would expect. So once we get that driven in there, it's going to be a little bit hard to get it to slide down, but then it'll be all right after that, and it'll it'll be just fine. So there you have it. I mean, so between the old yoke and the old bushing, let's take a look at the old yoke. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that should not be like that. So we got the new bushing in there. Um, no real trick to that. Just, you know, like I said, there's the notches around this, around this, uh, tail housing. See the notch there, see the notch there. Line that hole up with that notch right there and then drive that thing all the way in until the chamfer, the bottom of the chamfer is, is even with the tail housing. So it's just, just proud of the face there. And then next we'll just press the seal in there. I'm just going to clean that surface up with some acetone and I've got a new seal. We'll press a new seal in it, and that's it. This thing goes back together. Okay, so the seal is in. That was actually the harder part, but I got it in there. Uh, that tool doesn't really fit the new seals. The, it, the inner diameter of that tool is supposed to fit on the outside of the seal. It's just, and I'll show you on another seal uh, when I pull it all out of there, but it's, it's a little bit too small. The newer seals, seals are bigger in diameter, so at any rate. Um, we'll just, we want to make sure we put some ATF on this. You don't want to tear up that seal. Then you just take the drive shaft and you shove the yoke in there. That's, it's just that easy. 
And if I didn't mention this already as well, I greased these splines already when I was fitting this whole thing up. So just make sure you put a little bit of grease on those splines. The new one, the new yoke, it's going to be a little bit tight. All right, she's back together. No real issues, just slid, slid together like it's supposed to. I'm hopeful that the uh, balance is uh, good on this new yoke. I would assume it would be, but, uh, you know, you never know. So everything went together as I expected. The, the yoke is nice and tight in that bushing. It just, it's just the perfect fit. It goes in there, so there's no play in it anymore. That all looks good. I greased up the U-joints. Got the rear uh, bolted back in up there, so should be uh, ready for a test drive. Absolutely no clunk now. So if I let off, it's very quiet. All I'm hearing is just a little bit of gear mesh. It was, I wish I had taken a video of it beforehand, but um, it was it was a heck of a clunk. I, I don't know if it would have picked it up or not, but at any rate, like if I get back on it here, no clunk. It would, it would always clunk when I get back on it again. So anyways, uh, just a quick repair. Sorry I didn't show installing the actual bushing, but uh, just too hard to get in there. There's lots of videos online. Anyways, we'll wrap this one up. It was uh, definitely important to have the right tools to do the job. Yeah, I highly recommend changing that bushing if your trans hasn't been rebuilt and, the, and verified that the bushing's been changed. Um, what a difference. It drives like a completely different car. The, just the, the clunk, the vibration, everything, it's all gone. It's all gone. So uh, definitely uh, recommend it. This is video bonus time. This is a Snap-on 8672 Delta. D is in Delta. Made in USA. So that's for C4. I imagine it probably does others as well, but it's marked C4. Uh, I'm sure long out of production. But you probably find it used on Flea Bay. Let's see. This is a Snap-on 8688. Alpha Dash One. I don't know that the Alpha Dash One is part of it or not, but the eight six eight eight will probably get you there. S Dash eight six eight eight. So S Dash eight six eight eight and uh, S Dash. Actually, there's no dash. Eight six seven two Delta.